We can now. You're on mute, Matt. I know, I just looked, I was like, oh, my microphone's <laughs> muted. Welcome everyone to Devs in the Shed. Uh, we'll start that again. So uh, we have uh, myself, Matt Coles, uh, Paul Kickle, and, and Aaron on the show. Um, Aaron, because you did such a good intro uh, last week when we were live at the AWS Sydney Summit, do you want to just give us a little bit about why uh, why the name Devs in the Shed for our stream? Sure. Uh, let me try and do the, the abridged version this time. Uh, we're Devs. We work at AWS and we build things. Uh, we generally like to get out and build IoT-based projects or physical projects in the real world. So we have sheds. We build those projects in our sheds. And then we like to come on the show and demonstrate some of the things that we do and also have guests come and, and show off some of the projects that they're building as well. Nice, excellent. Uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, 10 out of 10 for the pitch there. <laughs> so this week we are going to be building a bot uh, with Amazon Lex. Uh, so we're going to have the audience uh, help determine what type of chat bot that we're building. So we'll do this live. I thought this would be a fun and a little bit of, of a different episode. Um, if, if there are no ideas, I'll let everyone think about an idea for about the first five or 10 minutes. But if there's no ideas, then uh, we do have a recommendation from LinkedIn. Um, someone wants us to build a certification chatbot. So we'll start planning that out. Um, firstly, though, uh, we are going to go through the what's new, some of the announcements. But I also wanted to kind of have a bit of a recap on AWS Summit last week. So this was the first... Uh, in-person event that we've done in a very long time. Um, thanks, Paul. I can see you've posted the link to the summit, um, at least our section of the summit. Um, how how did both of you find it? Uh, I think it was like great to get back to you know seeing some people in person, seeing like f feeling that like energy energy uh, I guess around the like the trade um, the trade floor and um, getting to you know not just interact with the people that you do every single day. Like, you know, we're, we're focused on, on our customers and we have customers that we deal with every day. Um, when we're pulled into special areas, but when you have a lot of people together, um, you get introduced to other people, people ask you interesting questions. Um, so it, it was really great to get back to being in person. I know that they were saying that, you know, it, it became so popular that um, more people came than actually registered. So like, you know, it was a, it was a very popular event. The word spread pretty fast that something was happening in person. Um, and, and summer is like, for sure, my, my favorite Australian event. Um, and I've been going for a number of years. Um, so this year, obviously it was, it was much smaller, um, but it's, you know, I, I know already they're talking about like how, how great and how big it's going to be next year, which is going to be really awesome. Um, the sessions are really good for anybody that is interested. Like all of that content is still available on demand. Um, I'll post a link to that as well. Um, but yeah, there was, there was a number of really good sessions. I think I mentioned in our stream, there were some particular ones that I was interested in around Deep Racer. Um, the keynotes were really good. Uh, you know, it was great to see like Australian retailers up there and um, some, of the, uh, some of the other great uh, innovators in, in the Australian tech space that are coming out doing things that we just don't think about. So, you, you know, um, it was Swoop Aero that was talking about their, um, you know, flying their drones around and delivering like you know, much needed medications in, and so forth uh, to different people around the world in remote locations. It just wasn't possible without some of that technology. So yeah, it was, it was really great. And, and was was in, in that keynote session with the drones, because I, I, I didn't get to watch it myself, was there was there some code uh, shown as well, live code or something like that? Uh, I don't think that they specifically did some live code. They talked about the solution as a whole. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, so, they, so they, they went that deep. They did demonstrate uh, like where their nine regions are and where the drones, uh, they, they showed a live sort of, or a replay of a live tracking event where you'd see the, um, while they were discussing the integration with the uh, air traffic control API. So 
how they can route and reroute their drones based on other incoming air traffic control information. So they did they did show um, some like like presentation about it all. It wasn't a live code event, but it was very cool. Like just to see how like they're based out of Melbourne um, here here in Melbourne, and they're controlling all of their nine regions all out of that one control center. Um, and then they did talk about how each of the individual components in each drone is. Um, is uh, tracked individually and each of them has a shadow in the in the cloud and also they had a, a drone up on the stage one of their new models on the stage which was pretty cool yeah they're quite big those drones you know they could probably pick yeah. up a person yeah they're they're well for a VTOL drone they're, uh, they're pretty pretty small in terms of uh, industrial pretty big in terms of uh, when we talk about the 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 drones that we're used to playing for for video recording and, and stuff but yeah yeah so if, if they could pick up a person would i need to go to the airport anymore or could they just fly me to sydney <laughs> well that's what we're talking about when we like yeah. You know, yeah. we can have these Personal little pod drone correct somewhere that'd be awesome yeah. yeah i don't think they're quite big enough to pick up a person um but i think we're not far off they uh yeah. slightly bigger they might be able to do it a aaron what was your favorite bit so i know we're talking about the keynote but uh did, oh, well, did you have a particular yep yeah, so I I did I agree with Paul. I think like being back face to face was a, a big big part of it all. Like being able to connect with like colleagues. Uh, you know, it's the first time all three of us have been able to get together at one event and and like stream live all together in the same place. So that was that was fun. And and meeting up with colleagues that we haven't um, met face to face with for a couple of years, that was awesome. The the keynote presentations and also the um, like all of the all of the presentations I felt like really set a high bar this year a lot of the content that that was being discussed is like the it was in line with the way that AWS is progressing you know we're constantly abstracting we're constantly pushing the bar higher and higher I felt like all of the presentations kept up with that pace and it was demonstrating or discussing it may not have been a new uh, area or a new topic but it was discussing how we're pushing the boundaries of those areas so that that was cool but I think the biggest one for me was, probably the discussions that I was having with uh, customers. Like I met a lot of customers, some very interesting, very intelligent customers from um, all over Australia coming and discussing like what they're doing with AWS. We had some uh, quantum AI specialists there. Uh, that was like a phenomenal topic just to talk about what they're doing with their uh, PhD research, um, you know, working in, in industry as well as what they're doing in, in theory compared to compared to sort of what we're doing in the development space like just knowing that there's a lot to come you know we're going to keep pushing forward as they start to release what's capable and we start to pick up what's buildable and we meet in the middle i i think it just excited me for the future of of where we're going so a lot of those conversations with customers around what they're doing with what we're building where they're taking it how they're pushing it that that to me was probably the highlight of the event yeah, I liked how um, you know there was there was so so many different interesting perspectives from all the way through. But um, Monkey Monkey talked about like a um, you know some sort of pizza pizza bot or something like that. And, and I think that's probably like a, a good segue to say you know just before the show we were talking about what potential thing that we could build that would be like IoT, some piece of software, something demonstrable and something you could put your hands on and touch that we might you know we, we, we'd love to hear some suggestions from the audience of something that might be fun for us to build or something you'd like to see, like, let it be far out there. It is reInvent. We're thinking about some of those topics for that. So uh, let us know if you've got some pretty far out ideas on something that could build. I mean, the sky's the limit. Yeah, M Mickey Monkey, like, <laughs> it, was, it was funny. It was just like, we were like, let's let's have like a robot that identifies pizza toppings. And so it can tell us what toppings are on the pizza that's been brought out. Um, but uh, yeah, like we, we literally got an email an hour ago saying reInvent is, is happening. Uh, get a token and they were like oh like what do we do it's got to be interactive it's got to be physical it's got to be fun um or something. Yeah. yeah so so uh, anyways uh today as i mentioned for people that have joined late we are going to build a aws chat box using yeah. amazon lex um we have two ideas and so far we have a certification bot and a pizza shop phone or order bot so um so i am very keen to get some more ideas coming in and whilst whilst you're having a think about that as we're going to build something together with everyone um let's go through the announcements very quickly so i'm just going to share my screen give me one minute 
So the first announcement that we have is um, this is this has actually been happening for a while, and, and I know everyone loves me talking about Amplify, and I get paid every time I talk about it. <laughs> uh, is the constant joke, but uh, um, Amplify um, has basically rewritten their SDKs for Swift on iOS uh, about a month ago. Um, which which basically means that it can keep up to um, feature parity with um, what's happening in the JavaScript SDK, et cetera. So we use a tool in AWS uh, called Smithy to produce APIs across multiple platforms. Um, it's open source, so everyone can read about it if you're interested. In fact, you know, let's have a look, AWS Smithy. Um, you know, you can always, I'll paste the link in so people can see it on the chat. Um, you, you can have a read, um, but like if, if you're wondering how we've got Go support and Python support and JavaScript support and C Sharp support and all the support for different languages when we release a new service and we keep it consistent um, as an API across, but, but it, it uses some of the benefits of each language, like Smithy is kind of the magic um, that allows us to have, um, you know, really nice SDKs that, are, that feel native to each language. So check it out. But it basically, Android uh, has been rewritten similar to Swift for Amplify in particular. And so that basically means that um, Android and iOS will have parity in terms of the feature sets um, that you can use within your application. So you want to do some machine learning, you want to use uh, you know, the database, data store, if you want to use GraphQL APIs, like all that stuff's going to be there. And it also means that you can kind of use some of the native tools um, a lot better, like in, in the iOS one, um, rather than having to rely on CocoaPods to do your imports, you can actually just use Swift Package Manager. But it's really good to see that this has happened for the Android uh, library as well. And uh, I'm really hoping that we see this across other platforms also. So that way we've got JavaScript, you know, um, we've got Android uh, and then through Kotlin, etc. Um, and then we've got like iOS with Swift. And then hopefully we see that for like <laughs> Flutter <laughs> Intense. Anyone from the Amplify team uh, watching, I would love to see that. Uh, any, anything to add to this, Aaron or Paul? Not to the Smitty one. No. <laughs> no. Um, cool. Uh, this one, I maybe I'll let you lead. You're, you're the .dot .net guy here. <laughs> yeah, this one probably. I'm the only one excited about this one. I think uh, from this this team. Uh, so uh, the encryption SDK for .NET now, now is generally available. So now it's support for um, C, Java, JavaScript, Python, and now .NET generally available. Um, so this is a client-side library for helping to develop um, encryption uh, for um, for applications, essentially. So from the client side, following um, sta like industry standards and best practices. So this just makes things, I remember years ago, you know, having to try and use um, very complex um, uh, encryption algorithms to then sort of encrypt and decrypt and it just made things very difficult to understand when when working with encryption and decryption in the applications this one uh, the the encryption sdk makes things very easy by you know calling the library you know specifying what type of encryption you want to do providing your data for the encryption so what are you actually encrypting and then being able to encrypt and decrypt so i'm very excited for the .NET community is now generally available for the encryption sdk Cool. Anything to add there, Paul, as well? I, I mean, I've, I've used a bit of C Sharp, but it's Unity only, so I've never touched .NET in my life. I think just to reiterate what Aaron said, you know, when you're, used, when you're building an application, you're looking to implement encryption, like looking for that nice, easy standard way to do it that's consistent across the board is, is really handy. Um, if you're using one of the other languages, which you, you likely are, you're probably not just a C Sharp developer. You want to do things the same way, and having this in .NET is great. That, that is a really good point, Paul, because um, while I might be using .NET sort of in the application space, a lot of the lambdas and stuff that I develop are in Python, are in JavaScript, and having that same library available across all of the three languages means I, I can write the one line of code, basically copy it, paste it across, maybe tweak it a little bit for the syntax of the different language, but it's all the same. You know, it's the same library, so you're 100% right. Makes it uh, uniform across languages. Yep. Now I, I'm just going to detour a little bit. Gek Dev um, has called out if there's if he can get uh, devs in the shed socks, I can help. So uh, w one of the funny things about being back in person, and I'm going to pick on Paul with this, uh, was Paul went loot mad. He was like a treasure <laughs> goblin running around, uh, running around um, Summit. Yeah, trying to grab as much swag as he could, and he actually he loaded up my bag so full that um, I have like billions of pairs of AWS socks. Um, 
the, the idea was that we weren't going to wear all these socks. So may, maybe maybe what we can do is we can have some prizes throughout the weeks, Paul, where we uh, we would distribute the uh, the collected loot. Yep, definitely. My customers have already asked for for fo- uh, socks. Um, so you know, like, and a couple of people reached out after we mentioned it on the stream. Um, but I, I like, yes, AWS socks are really good. But I wonder whether Get Dev wants Dev Shed socks, and I think that that's yeah. like that's what I'd call raising the bar when it comes to socks. Yeah, so, so if marketing are watching our, our video, um, feel free to uh, to ping us an amount and we'll uh, we'll get some orders underway. Maybe maybe twenty grand of uh, dev shed socks. Yep, something yep. like that. Pretty cool. That would be that amazing. Might cover half the audience. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, cool. Okay, so uh, I might I might go to this one next. Actually, I'll save I've saved my next tab for last, considering we're going to talk about Lex today. This one was really cool. Um, so uh, we have uh, new Graviton free instances um, available. So the C7G um, family. Um, within this, they are using DDR5, which is awesome. Um, you should get a good speed increase um, in um, your memory operations. Um, you've got 50% more bandwidth compared to DDR4. Uh, they use 60% uh, less energy, which I'm not too sure how they achieve that for the same performance. That, that seems like a really nice statistic. So it's going to reduce your carbon footprint in the cloud. And the other thing that I did like is we, we did have a bunch of customers talk about this on a video that we had on the AWS uh, YouTube. Um, the official AWS YouTube, there was a number of customers that were saying that like they were getting like between 30 to 80% better performance compared to the, the C6 uh, Graviton uh, instances as well. Um, we, we all love ARM, as you know, like Raspberry Pis. Um, two of the three of us have MacBook M1s with one coming. Um, and then we also, like, we try and use ARM when we build for the cloud as well. It just um, we're, we're big fanboys of, of ARM in general. Anything to add to this, Paul or Aaron? I mean, less power, more performance. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing, right? I mean, you know, our focus is yes, you you know, we want to always save money. If you get more performance, you don't need as as many CPUs. Um, if you want to save money, again, look for look for the chip that's going to be the most performant. Um, and, and sometimes, like, just the cost of that chip is is performant. But further to that, like, when we think about like any almost any ARM device that you think about, uh, they're not as hot. They don't run as hot which means, you know, your lap isn't going to burn. If it's things aren't running as hot, then you need less power consumed to cool those devices. So that's just, it's just a good thing. Like, yes, our arm is cool. We really like it. I like the performance gains, but it's also good for the planet. Excellent. Side note, I'm still waiting for my M1. <laughs> yeah. I have an M1 ordered. It's on its way, but uh, I'm waiting to to experience the, the improved power and ability of the um, chip for my laptop. So... Yeah, I'll let but, you know but, but I, I, I can comes. say we, we're going to let you off the hook, Aaron, because because <laughs> your your laptop has a dedicated GPU, so it's got a nice NVIDIA card. Oh, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, that basically means that you can do some machine learning video games as well. Um, so it is going to run incredibly hot, but um, it's nice to have a dedicated GPU. <laughs> um, so let's go to the last one. Uh, so Amazon Lex launches support for Phrasence. Like today is all going to be about Lex. Um, as I said, we're going to build a chatbot using Amazon Lex. Um, this feature is quite nice. So, you know, like through, through the way that intents work, um, if you make a spelling uh, error or you accidentally say something, if you're using Polly on top, like which is a voice service uh, for Lex, um, if you make a, a small mistake, it's generally going to be smart enough if it's had enough training and variations of how words can be said to, to be able to pick that up um, and give you a hint. But this, this particular feature actually allows you to have the context of what users might call things. So with, with my bank, actually it's the same use case as this, right? Like um, I, I name my accounts, like I've got a shared account uh, for savings with my wife. I've got a shared everyday account, uh, shared credit cards, um, but we, we, we give a nickname to each of these accounts so we know what they are. Like, I'm never going to remember the, the 20 digit number that the bank gives me. So this allows you to basically like, um, get hints like, Hey, you know, like, um, you know, uh, me and my wife's savings accounts, and it's going to be able to look up, um, and have context of like the pay nicknames and the pay like, um, account nicknames, um, for transactions. So if you've got things where the users might use slang, which is very, very often in Australia. 
uh, you can paint that extra context for Lex. Um, so it will be more accurate in understanding the user, um, not just um, not just because you've said something slightly differently, but because you've got a different way of calling something something. I don't know if there's an easier way to clarify that, but uh, I, I quite like this little feature. I Words. think the, 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 yeah, the, the summary of it is, is that we can now provide programmatic hinting for how somebody might say something as it comes across. It now has a, a hints of what it could be. So it helps improve the conversation with the, the AI instead of um, guessing you know, outright, it, did you say this? No. Did you say this? No. It's now closer to what, what you might have said. Yeah, another good way is like um, I might refer to my IT devices as Matt's Raspberry Pi and little robot that he's building, right? Whereas yep. my wife, she might call it Matt's Toys, right? So, yep. so like if, if she comes and says Matt's Toys, it's going to know that uh, it's referring to what I call the Raspberry Pis. Um, so, anyways, uh, enough on the new features. Let's let's dive in and start working out a chatbot. Uh, do we have anything in the comments? Let me just have a quick scan first. Uh, there, there was a couple of questions. We've kind of gone over them. GecDev wants a Gravitron for home. Um, and I am Dirk said, uh, I guess this is referring to what you're saying. So it's a vector to a lookup table then. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Under yeah. the hood. Yeah, under the <laughs> Yeah. Um, cool. So I'm going to get another screen up. Does anyone have any ideas on what chatbot uh, we're building? Or does anyone want the vote for some of the ideas that we have? So I'll the, just the, to give a little notepad to start planning. The uh, one we had by GecDev above was not not specifically the one we were discussing with pizza topping recognition, but more ordering pizza online. So being able to ask for, you know, what is the menu and maybe have some cards come up with menu items and say, you know, I want a pepperoni pizza and then being sent a salami pizza. Yeah, so that, that was actually Monkey uh, Monkey. Yeah. Go, Paul. What about a swag ordering bot? Like people like swag. You talked it, you mentioned yeah. it. Um, you can have a bot that tries to figure out what it is that you want after you filled out your survey or something. Cool. Uh, anyone in the audience have any ideas or want to double down on a particular bot? No ideas? Let us let us know which of the three we should start building in Lex. <laughs> And Aaron, if you can hear us, your video has just dropped. How about we just um, go random number generator one, two, three, and then and let that be the answer. Okay, so we're going to do this in... I could hear you. Somebody came to the door and wanted to give me a box. Ah, uh, okay. Delivery. I've got a I've got a box coming a spider robot thing nice. <laughs> today, so I'll be I'll be looking out for that. Um, so ma yeah, okay. So let let's do a random number generator, right? Like um, uh, sock between... Autobot. <laughs> okay, so I will I will swap screens then. I Go think Mookie, Mon uh, Mookie Monkey is asking for the sock Autobot. I think that would be your swag Autobot. Same, same. So you can have, you know, like socks, hoodies, T-shirts, a few different types of um, swag, and then you can order, you know, wh whichever one you want to order. Yeah, we could potentially uh, we could potentially do that. <laughs> um, looking at my screen, I just uh, just found the random generator, and it actually generated free. <laughs> so that is the swag bot. So maybe maybe we go for that. Um, okay, so let's let's start planning this out. Uh, I'll get back my little notes uh, so we can kind of uh, tag along. Um, da -da 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 -da. We want to start planning very quickly um, before we get into uh, like Lex and start building things for the interface. Um, Aaron and myself will kind of explain um, the pieces of Lex as well. So anyone that's not familiar with chatbots, like as we hit things like intents and um, fulfillment and all these bits and pieces that will come up, like we'll and slots for orders, like well, we'll kind that of might that be out. might be a good place to start. Like, what is an intent? <laughs> what is an intent? Yeah. So yep. 
Firstly, uh, an intent is, to me, it's about uh, wanting to do something, right? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be that, right? Like an intent can simply be a greeting. So m maybe it's, I want to say hello. So, so um, yeah, what, what's your, how would you define this? Say, most um, of the time, so there are a few different types of intents. Obviously, there's an elicited intent and an, and an unelicited intent. So when you start with a chatbot, it might give you a greeting and say, hey, welcome, I'm I'm Swagbot. Um, and that's an unelicited intent in terms of the the application knows to to welcome based on you know the event is that the chatbot has started the elicited intent is more an intent exactly what you were saying i want to fulfill an action but the intent is a group of a few things it's an utterance which is your um your trigger for the intent so an utterance is the phrase that, that the person is saying so hi i want to order some swag would be an utterance and the intent needs to recognize that utterance and say, well, what kind of, you know, the, the response might be, what kind of swag do you want to order? Because to what you said before, it needs to fill some data slots. So it needs to actually figure out what are we doing? So the, the action that it's going to fire off will be based on, does it have all the data? No, it doesn't. Because I might not have said, I want to order some socks. I just said, I want to order some swag. So now it's going to ask, what kind of swag do you want to order? You know, do you want socks? Yes or no? Or what kind of swag? And it might give you a couple of options. And then it can fill some data slots because it'll say the swag data slot is socks. So now if we have, I want to order some socks, the same utterance, so the same intent with a different utterance, it can also fill the data slot and say, you know, let me ask you some other questions. So it might trigger another intent, which is now the ordering of instead of the understanding of. So it'll be like, you know, what's your address so that we can deliver it to you? Or, you know, do you want to pick it up or another uh, action essentially based on the initial um, intent. Was that a good summary? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of writing my my translations of this up as well for Chatbots 101. Um, I think a lot of it comes together like, you know, both Matt and Aaron have spent a lot of time building Chatbots. And I would say that I've spent far less time and a lot of it comes together and begins to click once you start working through the console and building out the bot. And once you see that, you're like, oh, I understand. I get these things. Um, and, you know, these, the, you know, uh, you know, utterance, intent, context, all, all these pieces, like, you know, they can sound a little jargony. But once you see how it works together, you realize that actually it's quite simple to stitch it all together and, and build the foundations of what you need from a bot. Yeah. Yep. So I can also say, like, from, like, we're going to work with Lex, right? Yeah, but yeah. once you understand these basic concepts, so intent, utterance, slots, content, um, fulfillments of what's actually happening when it's got all the data for that intent. This is also how Alexa works. So if you want to go and start building skills for Alexa, once you understand how all this works, you can then start to go mi like migrate from your Alexa skills into your Alexa skills and start building. Um, now there's a lot more things to consider in terms of um, like visuals. If you've got like the Alexa um, with the screen, so you can do um, like displaying something on the screen. It's not just about voice then. Um, as well as the Lex bot that we're, we're building could be actually both, right? It could just be text. So we're typing into a text box. But also, um, like Matt said before, you've got Polly, which does the um, output so it can talk back to you. We can also do the same. We can actually have um, transcribe, listen to what we're saying to, turn it into text for Lex to then consume and then respond in, in voice. So you can have a conversation verbally with Lex as well, the same as you would with uh, Alexa. It's just, as I said, there's a lot more built around Alexa than just the standard, uh, the actual uh, conversational AI engine. Yep. Yep. And uh, Malbec, um, just wanted to say hi. Uh, one of us is in our sheds at the moment. Um, Paul's at his, his other house at the moment, so he'll hopefully be back in the shed next week. Uh, I just carried away with uh, with, with catch-ups this morning that I was that I didn't have ch chance to set up. That's all it was for me today. So sorry about that, audience. I came directly out of a customer meeting that uh, needed me in on this laptop. So I've got my other laptop set up in my shed, but I haven't had a chance to run run between my study and my shed. I'm gonna drop this uh, the 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 Amazon Lex features. So this uh, this page here. So what? What Matt's putting together at the moment on the screen here shows you visually. So it's a breakdown of if you've got a mobile app, you can have a look at 
So what are we talking about here? What's the intent? The intent is in this one, I want to book a hotel. Um, what's the utterance? So somebody has said, I'd like to book a hotel. So that's the utterance. So then the, the, the Lex bot understands I need to trigger the book a hotel intent based on the utterance that was spoken. I want to book a hotel. And then it needs to go through and start filling out the slots. So like what city, you know, um, what date, you know, how are you getting there? Do you need transport? All that sort of stuff. Um, and then the fulfillment is what does it do in the back end? So is it handing it off to another system and say integrating it with a booking system or is it just basically recording it as a, as an email or, a, or some data and then saying, thank you, you know, I'll, I'll submit that. Or if it's the full integration, it might wait for a few minutes to go and do the integration, confirm the booking, come back and say, thank you. I've booked your hotel, you know, here's your reference number and done. Like you've just gone and booked the hotel all from having a conversation with a bot. Yep. Yeah. So I've basically put some, uh, some, uh, context to each of these um that will kind of help us know that what, what we've got to do in lex um feel free to click that link um but i think paul put it into the channel so that that will kind of like help you understand where we begin with lex but a lot of this will make sense as we jump into the console so the the first thing i just wanted to do very quickly before we go into the console is like we've got the swag ordering bot right so um firstly we might have a greeting intent right like we want to say hi um we might have a goodbye uh, intent. Um, we want to say a goodbye and check there's no other swag uh, to order. So that's kind of like the basic skeleton of a conversation, right? Like we usually interact with someone, we say hi, we say goodbye. And then like what we, what we want is a, a swag bot, right? And so what's, 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 the, what's the intent? What, what's the... So what are we going to do you probably, with the... Yeah, yeah. You probably have two intents that I can think of. One would be like um, availability. So like what's available, so like a swag menu um, intent. So what, yep. what, what is available to order? And then the other one would obviously be the swag order intent. So now we want to actually order the intent, uh, swag. Yeah, so um, what's what's on offer? currently the, these are like pre pre fulfillments right like pre pre steps uh what's the term in lex actually like um oh, i've got a bit of a mind blank is what we so the is, slots the data slots no no like so so like before we actually fire off and start to to do something with this intent we can collect like metadata like we can yep. paint some context and so you can actually oh, hook so... a lambda up to to do some of this like checking right yeah Yep. So one of the advantages of using Lex as per other, um, I've, I've worked with a few different, as has, has Matt worked with a few different um, chatbot engines. One of the advantages of using Lex as a chatbot engine, obviously on AWS, is its, is its direct integration with Lambda. So we can actually use Lambda as a validator. So there's a few things that you can do Lambda with inside Lex, but I think along along the lines of what um, what Matt's saying, like there's, there's session variables that we can set so we can derive some information. We can store them as a session variable. So it transcends an utterance. It goes across the entire bot um, conversation, whether you use a slot or not, each slot can have access to those session variables. So that's data that we set, but you can then hand off from an intent, you can hand off to a Lambda, which can then take that session data and it may trigger a uh, may trigger another intent based on information it has in the session or you can integrate from lambda because you're in lambda you've now got access to everything that lambda can access inside your aws account so you can integrate with all of your other services and this is where i was saying like for fulfillment you you might hand it off to a lambda to go and do the integration but in terms of the utterance as we're you know asking something we might say um you know swag listing uh, intent might be like what swag is available, we will hand that off to a Lambda validator. So that will basically uh, hand off, it will know based on the utterance that it needs to uh, fire Check. swag. Yeah, exactly. Then the Lambda might go and talk to DynamoDB, which has a table of all of the swag and the volumes of what's available. And then it'll come back and it'll say, well, you know, refine this. Anything that's zero, then we won't respond. But if we've got some socks and hoodies and, you know, uh, T-shirts is zero, then just respond with socks and hoodies. There yeah. are two ways we can respond. We can actually just give it a text. So as a, as a conversation, 
hey, we have, you know, swags and hoodies available, or we can actually provide cards. So we can actually say, give an interactive um, option where instead of just saying we have swags and hoodies, we'll say, these are what's available, click on what you would like. And it, it's a card, they can click on it, and that will respond back in text saying, you know, I want a hoodie or I want socks. Yeah, I, I think that that's like really important. So, you know, that the, our chatbot or the Lex chatbot isn't designed about to just serve up like static things, like question and answers. It's like real time, it's interactive. Like it can have like up to like, you know, literally the moment you press enter, it'll go and check the database for the available items or, you know, wh whatever it might be, like what's the current currency exchange between the US dollar and AU dollar. And, and you can go ahead and, and calculate that, work that out on the fly yeah. for you direct at that point in time, rather than having to pre-fetch or pre-populate some sort of static database. I can tell you also, without telling you what, I can tell you what we're looking at is there are a couple of different teams in AWS all working on enhancing the conversational AI capabilities of Lex or chatbots in general. So it's not just about, you know, the Lex engine, it's other components that integrate with Lex to provide, you know, we have um, graph databases. So Neptune database is the ability to create relationships between different data types. We have teams that are working with different AWS services to integrate them to then produce more advanced conversational AI. On top of that, the Lex team themselves is always uh, improving their um, natural language processing capability. So understanding, uh, like just like this, uh, this new release that Matt mentioned earlier, they're pushing the capabilities of recognizing what you're saying because it's not just one language it's one language with many different um each language sorry it's not just one language it's many languages but then for each language it's many different accents and dialects and there's so many different things that need to be taken into consideration on top of the accents and dialects and languages there's also uh, language that in one region um like phrases yeah that may make sense in one region that doesn't make sense in another i know i've got a multilingual family i've got multilingual friends who in a certain area you know will will say a statement that they think it means something to me but i have no idea what they're saying until they explain it it's like oh okay here in australia we say it differently you know so there are phrases even that the lexbot team are trying to pick up and say well you know this phrase means this uh, but it may all be may also be contextual so you're coming from Australia. Australia English is different to say UK English, where a different saying in the UK may mean something differently in Australia. Even words, the difference between some words in English um, mean different things in different regions. So there's always something being improved in terms of the, nangu the, the, la the natural language recognition of Lex, as well as conversational AI integration components now, now i saw a comment from the audience oh wait no i didn't but i know this comment is their audience is asking for it let's see the console man oh yeah, yeah let's, let's go get, for let's it. get into I, it I, I think the only other thing that i did uh add in was a fallback intent so this yeah. this is good if you like like my last job we'd pass to real humans uh in chat from a contact center um but the fallback intent is if you don't have humans to answer questions um and you want the customer to rephrase um the question so that chop the chatbot might be able to understand uh because of those language differences like i'll say howdy instead of hey and maybe it just hasn't been trained with its yep. utterance on like how to understand howdy it only understands hi hey you know hi there um and i i think the logic's like right right like it's these these two elements that we need to focus on as we build this out initialization is the actual name of the lambda that we'd have to set up yep. to check the availability of products and what products are on offer um, but I, th I think the slots, you know, to complete this transaction is a full name, address, phone number, and the quantity of item if we let people order multiples. So, uh, yeah, I think we, and, and the last thing I was going to say was, I was thinking about it. It would be cool that, like, eventually, if we actually sent out merch with this chatbot, that, like, we have some kind of mechanism that, to come back to the customer over SMS with a chatbot or something like that. Once we've seen that the delivery has arrived to make sure the item wasn't damaged in transit, ask, ask, like, ask a few questions of them, um, you know, see what the experience was like, et cetera. So we can kind of then optimize and build out the chatbot. Like if they want more from it, right. Maybe, maybe they want an AWS FAQ on top of like uh, swag um, for devs in the shed, let's say. 
So let's go to the console. I'll get my screen share up uh, in a second. So I can, and... uh, for the AWS FAQ one, stay tuned. I can say, uh, come back and visit the AWS website at the end of August. And you may just see a very new, very shiny chatbot on the AWS website. Um, all going well if we release around uh, August is, is the plan. Um, so you'll be able to ask your AWS related questions in the in the chatbot. I think we're just starting on a few pages uh, in August, so it may be uh, targeted to specific pages to help people. But uh, after we've got it up on on the the website, we'll gradually release it to other pages, and you'll start to be able to interact with kind of the the latest in AWS chatbot. Nice, that will be very very cool. So uh, we're just in the AWS console. Uh, we just went to Lex as a service. Um, I've got a lot of experience with V1, um, but uh, I'm still a little bit new to V2. So the, the main thing that changed between V1 and V2 was uh, really the interface for me, right? And the fact that like you can have like a, rather than having many separate chatbots with very focused things, like there could be a, a service um, chatbot and a sales chatbot. Um, and the sales chatbot understands all the sales use cases, but it would escalate over to the service chatbot if the, if the rating of the utterance for the intent was low or, or it can find an intent to tie back to and the fallback failed. So it might go, hey, maybe this person doesn't want sales and it would go to another Lex chatbot that was set up for service. Um, Lex v2 kind of aggregates all of that, right? Like, so you can kind of have um, chatbots with hundreds of intents if you want. Um, th yeah. There is complexity in that though. Like you, you once, if you add new use cases to a chatbot with heaps and heaps of intents, like generally what you want to do is you want to start almost like unit testing um, the accuracy, like, so you'll, you'll have like a, a buildup of things that the chatbot should have an accuracy for, for like high there, um, and, and for the items and this and that. And if you see like a, a giant sway in the training data, as you add a new intent where old intents are less accurate, you might want to go in there and, um, and refine the utterances so you can bring the accuracy back. So, so the chatbot yeah. doesn't accidentally go down the wrong path to what the user asked. Or, um, um on that, like one bet, be, that one good way but the best practice or the best place to start when developing a chatbot is understanding, say, like domain-driven design, right? So um, we we can get into some very sticky situations when you've got like one bot with lots and lots of different intents. Um, but if you if you actually break your bots down into domains, and what I mean by a domain is for your business, your business may just be, well, we want to provide all information. That's cool. That's one domain. But then you might have break it down into, well, our business does a few different things. So if it's a if it's a public bot, it might be you know this is our sales bot, this is our marketing bot. One is for you know inbound leads, the other one is for providing sales information. And then, like Matt said, you integrate them so you can have a bot router that says, all right, well this this question coming in is relative to the sales bot. This one's relative to the marketing bot. If it were say internal, you would break it down like an organization, right? You might have an HR bot. You might have a um, you know the what are other teams, <laughs> the tech tech team bot. Or you know whatever whatever your type of organization is, the sales team bot, uh, and then that bot understands the domain for all of, like all of the utterances are relative to that domain, the same you would in any sort of distributed system. But then you have a, a bot that routes between them. Um, understand your domain first, and it will help you. Like in, in this case, we're building a swag bot, so it's, it's very simple. We're not going to have thousands of utterances for things that don't relate to swag. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call it uh, the Swagonator, I've decided. I like it. Uh, unless someone overrides me here. Well, um, it's kind of like Terminator, so it'll be like swag. If it's not available now, it'll be back. It'll be back. Yeah, exactly. That's good. good. Um, I didn't I didn't think of that. I just love putting Inator on the end of everything. <laughs> but I, I basically chose to add a fresh bot from the Lex interface, if you were following along while we, while we were kind of like um, talking about, you know, um, other bits and pieces. Um, I've given it the name, the description, um, you know, everything through AWS is driven through IAM permissions and we'll see that when we need to set up the Lambda as well. Um, so I've just basically created a role of basic Lex permissions and so it's automatically going to generate this new role for me. Um, and this is good, like it's going to show me some of the logs um, from CloudWatch if we have problems. So I definitely want this IAM permission set. This, this uh, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, this is an important one. So if you're bot is going to be facing children and asking questions of children, then there are additional legal checks that you need to go through. 
um, will be saying no because this bot is for adults only. It's for our viewers who want to order swag. There'll be no gathering of um, PP, like, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. You're scaring me now, right? Like, do, do we need, like, a age verification uh, intent? Yeah, so, like, we... if, if we were targeting children, yes, you have to go through all yep. of that. Like, it's not as simple as going, hey, I just want to create storybooks for children and have them, you know, like a choose your own adventure where the children talk to them. As soon as you start interacting with children, it's a big difference between how your bot, you know, legally, what you can do inside your bot. So, no, we're not targeting children. We're targeting people who want to order swag. These people are generally adults because they have credit cards and can pay for swag. Um, so, so we'll start with that, but, but yeah, like it's, it is a big deal. Like, and like you, as you can see the children's online privacy protection act, COPA, um, if you get into the console, you can link out and, and read more about when you would actually have to start saying yes. And if you're targeting, you know, children involvement in your, in your chat, then please read, go through and read it. It's very important. Yep. And PII data, that's a good call out. Uh, Mookie Moo, whenever I worked on chatbots, we had a, a slider that came out of the window and that had like a PCI compliant payment gateway. And all it would tell the chat window itself is whether the payment was successful or not. So the bot could continue. Um, we also set up masking as well. So if the person tried to pay with their credit card and typed into the chat window rather than the slide out window for payment, um, we would we would mask based off of regular expression. So that, that's kind of like something that might Thank be of interest you. to people building chatbots. Thank you, uh, uh, Mookie Monkey, as well, because as I was trying to say PII, I just came off a call earlier, call earlier today where we were developing devices that go inside PPE, the personal protective equipment. <laughs> so my acronyms, I should have just, yeah, personally identifiable information, PII, got it. Yeah, so so credit, credit cards like a PCI, um, uh, you, you want credit cards to be PCI compliant, uh, compliant when you take payments, but like PII yep. could be, uh, a credit card number it's something i like identifies yep. to an individual it could be a passport yeah. number yeah. an account oh. number etc email address absolutely yeah yeah yep uh cool uh the the other thing is the the session timeout so this this is something that um you know uh if if you if the person hasn't talked to the chatbot for x amount of time like we will kill that session um and that basically means that the user would have to tell us the context again if they wanted to continue like they might need to give us the address they might want to give us other bits and pieces of information so if you suspect the user is going to take a few hours you can change it to hours in the timeout but the thing that i used to do was i used to always keep it to five minutes and i would i would keep things within um redis uh yeah old place yeah yeah Yeah. i was going to qualify exactly that like even on the client side, right? It, depending on the type of application you're building, um, I would do the same. I would keep a session, uh, like the, all of the session variables on the local side as well, because if the session times out and you start a new session, that's fine because you can do a check first to say, do we already have other information? So it's a new session in the back end, but you can hand in all of that information to Lex. So you don't actually have to go through questions that you may have already answered. Yeah, you, yeah, like local storage or cookies. Um, exactly. For, yep. for us, we wanted to maintain that like over, because um, we were doing messaging conversations that could be for, for about yep. 30 days. So like a complicated uh, mortgage uh, might be a journey where you're talking to an agent, you're talking to multiple parties. And so in that in that case, we stored everything in Redis on our side so that we so, could kind of return or like regain the context of the conversation when the user came back. You can also, like some of the solutions that I've been involved with, uh, uh, extend that as well by creating a profile. So we had like a DynamoDB table with the, the you know, the some of the information that they fi- filled out. It may not be the, the PII information, but it might be, you know, the type of information. They were looking for sales information, not technical, all that sort of stuff. And although the session's expired, it may be a few days later that they've come back because we've stored in local storage a session ID, an identifier. You can hand that off and say, right, I've got an identifier saying that I've been here before. Go and look in the profile table and say, yes, we do have a profile that matches this. Join it together. And then instead of the initial utterance saying or the initial intent saying, hi, welcome to Swag Swaginator, it'll say, hey, welcome back to Swaginator. Do you want to order some more swag? You know, so you can actually tie together um expired sessions based on just storing it's the same concept as putting it in your redis cache you know storing it in a in a more long-term um store and then joining it up when you come back by integrating the the front end session with the back end session yep and so one one caveat here that's like worth calling out for people is usually i select uh, english australian right 
but um, w which is great. But if I want to use a lot of pre-baked Amazon in, in um, slots, sl uh, yeah, like, the data like if, if I want to have like a movie database or I want to have a database of products or things like Amazon provides a lot, a lot in US English, whereas Australia might have like the ability to um, have like um, another shrimp on a barbie. Yeah, like a, a number entered or something like that. So I'm going to keep it to English uh, US. Um, we can choose a voice. There are Australian voices, uh, but there's also a bunch of US ones. Um, my name's Matthew. So let's go with that one. And then the you intent to confidence. This this is important. So if if uh, if, if the chatbot um, believes that the accuracy of its guess that you're trying, like you'll you'll give an utterance like "Hey there." And if the accuracy says, like, I don't think I have any intent to say hi back, or, like, I, I don't understand what this person's saying, um, this this confidence um, threshold is, like, basically where it trips the fallback to ask the user to, to ask the question in a different way or, you know, like, uh, rephrase. So that, that's what this is doing. So I'm going to go done, and I think we're going to finally arrive in the Lex interface. Here we go. Uh, there's a, this is a really good example of like what we put in before. Like, uh, so we're basically going to have like a series of utterances. Maybe what we'll do is we'll start with a uh, an, an howdy intent. Say hi there to the user. So we'll call this a greeting intent. Um, so we'll get this one knocked out really fast so that everyone can kind of get used to what this interface looks like. Um, a lot of people build their own interfaces on top of Lex. Uh, you can talk to this programmatically with an API as well. Um, so uh, it's, it's always good there. Um, you've got the context between different intents. So if someone's asked about their savings account uh, for their bank, um, then they want to do a transfer. Uh, they probably want to transfer money from that savings account that they just checked on. So having the, the, the context allows us to make that, you know, it's you want to transfer out of your savings account correct, you can prompt the user so it feels smarter. Um, we won't bother with that for the how I there intent, but what we are going to do is we're going to add a few uh, utterances, right? So we're going to say hi, uh, ho, uh, howdy, hey, hey, and we want the typos. Like, do That's do not scary. do not be scared <laughs> of typos. So like, you know, I've accidentally mistyped hi. Uh, I've mistyped uh, hey. We want all this, and we want a hi there um how's it going like i think we've got a few a few different examples here but the idea is this is different ways that we'll we'll like we want the chatbot to know that this person's looking for the chatbot to give it a greeting back um there's going to be no slots for this one because like we're just simply going to return a response to the end user so we can actually ignore slots whereas when we build out the next intent um we're going to have to have some slots um so um, what we if, if we wanted to reconfirm with the user, um, we could have a confirmation slot. So you want to say hi to me, correct? And the user <laughs> says yes, and then it'll go well hi there. You know, then it can come back as a chatbot. We won't we won't bother with that. Um, and the fulfillment we don't need at the moment um, because we're not going to have a lambda that's going to like update a record somewhere in the back end or check stock or whatever. So we can ignore that for now. But what we do want to do is we want to give it a, a closing response, um, which is going to be, hi there, um, how may I help you? And so the idea here is, like the user said hi, um, they could come back and they could just go, give me swag, um, which should trip off the swag intent straight away. But if they start very nice, very polite, um, then the chatbot can say hi and then kind of prompt the user to tell uh, it's what it wants. And so the, the person will come back and say, um, yeah, I want some help ordering swag, which is kind of like, so we've got like a nice little journey flow to that. Um, so this, this here, that code hooks, that's what we were talking about earlier around the initialization function and the validation function. So you can actually add a Lambda to do the in, initial, you know, like to, to get data before the conversation or to validate things that are coming from both the user and what the intent thinks it needs to send back. Yeah. So I'm going to save this intent. Um, we don't need a, a Lambda. Uh, so we're not checking stock at the start of this, um, this particular intent. Um, we're just simply going to come back and say, hi, we'll build it. Just make sure that everything's like working. 
Um, so that will take a few seconds. And then we'll give it a test. So that way we can see that at least greeting's working. This might be something that we, uh, <laughs> Paul's prompting us, we've got a meeting afterwards. Um, this might be something that we can continue together and do some live coding and build out all the lambdas, etc. Um, so yeah. this might be fun to do over a series of sessions as well, because uh, we, like Aaron and I especially love chatbots. Paul, um, Paul can help us out on the lambda side as well. Um, Maybe anyone in the audience, uh, if they want to see like different type of application, like do you want us to build out uh, just a simple like like you can see on the screen now, you know, the test chatbot. We can build one like a web app style chatbot window where you can interact directly. Or do you want to see something a little bit more fun? Maybe where we're recording our voice. So we're actually press a button to speak and then it responds back in voice. So it's all vocal instead of textual. Um, like let us know in the comments what you want us to what you want us to build. And we can we can build that instead of us just, you know, building a, a very basic chat window where we're just doing text backwards and forwards, unless that's what uh, you want. Fat thirty two. So let, let me show you this actually, uh, because you know, as I as I've mentioned, I love uh, Amplify. Um, Fat thirty two Am uh, Amazon Lex uh, V two. So th this was something that I wanted to play around with uh, on GitHub. Um, if I can find, maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll just go to GitHub because I know I know the user that's created this. Um, so call out if you're Fat thirty two on the stream. <laughs> uh let's let's go uh yeah we might start with the regular chatbot get people's heads yep. around and see how it, how it works because like you said like i've done lex um i've done alexa not to the depth that you guys have but once you get one you get the rest so getting like yep. all your head around how that works and it, it also you know leads into you know the integrations between your chatbot what you need to do where you send things also has some similarities around how you integrate with like connect and connect can do the same things as well so if you're on a phone call and you can execute lambdas to do things in the back and all these things like once you start to get a feel of how that flow works you get a feel of not just like one single product but how our um, our suite of products around uh you know customer interaction work yeah, yeah so so like these are things that we can actually do on top right so amazon lex teams basically got a web ui that you can use and you can tie into a react app um, so th this will just allow me to embed Lex directly into uh, like whatever. Um, I could use the Poly Voice. I could connect it into a contact center platform like Amazon Connect, which is really cool as well. Um, so you know uh, we can always do a Connect episode at some point. I what? think we've got one plan in the future. But the Fat Thirty Two. So um, there's too much to do with Fat Thirty Two being a, um, <laughs> a file system uh, type. Um, but like the Fat32 has actually produced his uh, or her or, or their own Lex V2 provider here. So we could actually tie it into Amplify if we wanted to as well. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask. Like I, mm. I mean, I've obviously done a couple of projects where we've built it all, the integration with Lex from scratch in a couple of different languages. So like in the audience, if you, if you want to see how to integrate directly with Lex. Let's say if we're just building a React app and you want to just do direct integration through Java, JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever, let us know. Or do you want to follow this? Do you want us to use, say, Amplify Lex provider, you know, and actually integrate with Amplify? The choice is yours. You know, this we don't often give you the opportunity to come in and say, build it this way. So like take the opportunity, tell us how you want us to build it. And that's what we'll do. We'll show you how to build following the way that you would probably do it if you were going to do it yourself. Yep. And what I've, what I've done here as well, this is really nice. So like, I, I, I hate it when like, I get the same response back in a video game and I talk to a character, right? Like, um, you know, we, we want a variation responses. So like in the response outside of how may I help you, the chatbot can also say, hi, how can I help? And we can have a different um, series of uh, variations that we could A-B test with the user. So A, it might be something that the chatbot asks a lot, so users get sick of it over time because it feels stale and static. Uh, but B, um, we can also work out what works for our consumers. Like if we're, if we're a super hip, cool, like snowboarding company, right? Like, um, and I know that's not very cool saying it like that. Um, like we, we might have a very informal way of talking to the user. Whereas if we're a bank, we're probably going to be a lot more formal, right? Like it's going to be, hi there, how may I help you? Uh, cool. So let, let's quickly test this out. Let's see a couple of the variations. So hi there, 
hi, so we know it's all working and we can see the response is different. So we've got a bit of variation in the response too. Um, the good thing about this is like we've seen, like, I mean, you and Aaron are comfortable with this, but for everybody else that hasn't worked on it before, like look at how easy it is to build and test your chatbot, right? You click build and it's there available for you directly right in front of you without even having to leave the console. So instant feedback for, with, with, you know, as your um, chatbot is being developed. Yeah, and, and you can see here on my screen, like we're, we're out of time, so we will continue this because this would be really fun for Aaron and I, and I and hopefully the audience to follow along as well. And um, and Paul also, like, um, like give me swag, chocolate. Like it, it has no idea what I'm saying, right? And so the next part that I need to work on is tying in this fallback intent and it acts as that black hole intent. So if it doesn't know what I'm saying, it can go like, hey, you know, like can you rephrase it for more. me? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we are going to build this uh, swag bot. Um, we are going to do that over a series of weeks. Uh, we'll get a lot more complex. We'll show you the initialization lambda, the check stock. Um, we will show you slot fulfillment. Uh, we can um, get asked all the questions so that we can post something um, through to you. Um, we'll set up that fallback intent. We need a goodbye intent as well. Um, we might add in some extra journeys if people want to see some things. Um, maybe maybe we'll have a bit of machine learning and we can do some image recognition if we can think of a use case as to why devs in the shed should have photos sent our way. Um, although the audience is going to have to um, going to have to make sure that if they do use the chatbot to send us um, photos that are uh, dev and shed related in particular, because our oh. our bot's going to be very specific. Uh, don't send us anything else, no personal pictures, etc. Um, so I know we've got to jump, Paul uh, and Aaron. Um, Let's uh, let's see what we've got on for next week. Maybe we can continue this week. We're going to be streaming 12 p.m. AST time uh, regularly again. Uh, last couple of weeks, just with um, Summit, we've changed the times. So uh, if you if you want to watch, um, I spilled it out. Um, just uh, actually, I think Josh is next week, isn't he, Paul? He's doing yeah, um, a, a big retail overview next week. Like just the the some of the innovation that has been that Amazon has been working on within the retail space, um, you, you know, like, look, we're, Amazon.com is like, you know, built on retail, right? So like, there's so much innovation that happens in that area. And it'd be good to, you know, surface some of that and show people what's been happening, because there's been quite a lot of innovation and quite a lot of challenges that have happened, given the last few years, that, you know, so much of that uh, physical presence has moved to online and moved to the digital digital channels is where you know so much of the innovation is happening Oops. and so 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 what we'll do is we'll we'll continue this maybe in two weeks then um if people are interested enough in it um we'd love to build this out the lambda side will be really fun for developers uh to watch along and then i i really am keen to see the fat 32s um amplify uh widget I'm guessing we're going to have to design a UI, so we're going to have a bit of CSS to work through and uh, and make it look pretty. But um, this could be a fun project to go on going. I yeah. might be able to uh, copy some of the CSS we've done in other projects, so we can yeah. save us some time. Sounds cool. good. I just posted in like what I what I actually did was play the the background music from our summit session, but I pasted in the YouTube video to our summit session. Um, feel free to look at that. That was where we had like actual producers helping us out. Um, that was a lot of fun there. Yeah, and the, la the last thing that I will do before we say goodbye, because we do have to run, is um, we, we have a Lex workshop that I built. So I'll paste the link there as well. So if you do want to explore more and build out a full chatbot, like have a feel free to follow. Um, but we'll continue this later and we've got to jump. So thanks for everyone for watching. And uh, uh, hopefully this is a fun episode about chatbots. Take care all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you.